Hey everybody, today we're gonna to talk about math. So on one of the previous Ask David questions, I was asked in the comments what the best print size is for each format. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna talk about common print sizes. And we're gonna talk about them and you'll see some stuff going on up here to help you out with it. Then we're gonna talk about them as being fractions. So there's a little bit of math here, but it's all gonna be pretty simple and easy to follow along with, especially if you're tracking what's going on to the left of my shoulder. So here are the common print sizes, the most common. And these are you know, current to 2017. The, the common print sizes have fluctuated a little bit over time, not, not a ton, but if you went into any online photo printing service, you could probably get a photo of any of these sizes as well as others, but these are the ones that should be universal to every photo printing company. These have evolved, these sizes, over time to suit different negative sizes. So 3x5 is really popular for 110 and things like that. 16x20 is fantastic for 8x10 and 4x5, and we'll see why this is in just a couple moments. So the next thing we need to do to understand the relationship between print and negative is to turn each of these print sizes into a decimal number. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the first number and divide it by the second. So three by five actually turns into three divided by five, which gives us 1.66. Four by six, four divided by six is 1.5. Five by seven becomes 1.4. Eight by 10 becomes 1.25. 11 by 14 becomes 1.27, which for us is close enough to 1.25 that it has the same aspect ratio as 8 by 10. 16 by 20 becomes 1.25. You're going to notice a pattern here in just a second. 20 by 24 becomes 1.2, which again is close enough for us that it could count as 1.25. And then 24 by 30 is 1.25. So let's keep these in our minds for a little bit. These uh, these numeric depictions, these decimal note depictions of the print sizes. So you'll have noted, of course, the prevalence of print sizes that are approximately one and a quarter longer than they are high. And what, this, what these numbers, what these decimal numbers are telling you is that for every inch you go up, you're going over that amount. Okay, so you're, you're finding out what would be like the slope of a roof or of a driveway or something like that. If you go up an inch, you're gonna go right 1.25 inches. Or on the smaller, like three by five, if you go up an inch, you're gonna go right one and two thirds of an inch, up and over, just like that. And that's, that decimal notation is important for understanding the relationship between the print sizes. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna look at the common digital and negative sizes. And this assumes no changing in aspect ratio from what you took to what you're gonna print. So M43, is the smallest that we're gonna look at. Uh, 110 is somewhere in here, but it's not shot often enough that we're gonna talk about it. But M43 is 17.3 millimeters by 13 millimeters, giving us 1.33. APS-C for Canon is 22.2 by 14.8 millimeters, which is 1.5. APS-C for Pentax, Sony, and Nikon is 23.6 by 15.6, giving us 1.51, we'll call it 1.5. 35 millimeter and full frame are 24 by 36, which is 1.5. Uh, this 645, which is our first medium format size, has an actual negative size of 56 millimeters by 24 millimeters for a uh, decimal of 1.33. Six by six is actually 56 by 56 millimeters or one. 6x7 is 56 millimeters by 72 millimeters, or 1.28. This is where it's going to start to get a little bit interesting because 1.28 is pretty darn close to 1.25. 6x9 is 56 millimeters by 84 millimeters, and that's 1.5. It has the exact same aspect ratio as APS-C and 35 millimeter. And 4x5, which is 102 millimeters by 127 millimeters, has a decimal notation of 1.24, which is effectively identical to 1.25. 
eight by 10 is the same aspect ratio as four by five, but we're gonna stop at four by five because that's the most common large format. And if you're shooting larger than four by five, you already know everything that's gonna be talked about in the rest of this video. So to find the ideal print size, all you need to do is take your negative size and match it up with the print size you want to use. So if you had a four by five negative and you said, I can print this at 16 by 20 without cropping. Yes, you effectively you could. You might lose a little bit of the uh, negative carrier on the edges, but that's fine, it's the same. If you said, I, I can print this six by seven image with effectively no cropping on eight by 10 or 16 by 20 or 20 by 30, well, yes, you could. But if you took a four by five or six by 10, a six by seven image, and you want to print them on three by five, which would make no sense. But if you did, you'd be cropping a lot off the top and bottom of those images in order to fit the aspect ratio. So let's talk about how you can do this yourself. You've taken a photo, you've cropped it to whatever size looks good. And one of the nice things about digital photography and sharing things online is you're not locked into these standard sizes. So you've, you've cropped it to whatever size you want. So let's say that you wanna figure out at home what size print you should use for your negative or for your digital image. You've taken a photo on your digital camera, you've cropped it because you wanna change the aspect ratio. And one of the nice things about sharing online especially is who cares what the aspect ratio is? The computer will figure out how to display it on your friend's Facebook feed or Instagram, whatever it is. So you can have any aspect ratio you like, you're not locked into the standard print sizes. So let's say you've cropped a photo down to 4,588 pixels wide and 2,346 pixels high. If my math is correct, and I'm optimistic that it is, that gives you a decimal relationship of 1.94. At least that's what the calculator on my laptop screen tells me. So there's no print size that is 1.95, which means you're not open to any of the standard print sizes. So what you could do is you could either print it with letterboxing on a standard print size, or you could then further crop it to meet whichever print size you wanted, or add, go back to an older version where you have more of the top and bottom to meet one of the standard print sizes. So all you have to do is take the length of your photo and then divide it by the height of your photo. That will give you a decimal of one point something something, which will then tell you what your what print size you're closest to and that will let you choose the print size that best suits the photo you've taken.